Hiya. Today I wanted to have a look at the DEDS tool. Um, DEDS tool is a great tool for dealing with cravings, um, cravings and urges. Um, when they, they come and basically if we're in recovery, we're going to get cravings and we're going to get urges. This is a great way of dealing with them. Um, it's a list of things that we work through that can really help us. First one is delay. And it's based on the idea that a craving or an urge only really lasts about 10 minutes. Um, it tends to come up in a wave and go back down again. It may feel like it goes on longer, but you might get another urge straight away. But in actual fact, urges only last about 10 minutes. You can, you can time one. You can sit, on, uh, sit under a clock and watch one. Um, so if we can say to ourselves, you know what? I'm going to put off using my substance for a quarter of an hour and see how I feel. Um, it's a very good chance that in that time, the urge would have gone down. Um, I always used to get a bit of really dark chocolate, stick it under my tongue, and the rule was I wasn't allowed to have any substance until that bit of chocolate had uh, melted away into nothing and I wasn't allowed to chew. I'm almost guaranteed by the time it had melted away, that would be about 15 minutes or 10 minutes and my urge would have gone. Um, and I found that really useful. So delay, basically, put it off. Okay, so you try, you try putting it off and you're still getting, the, still getting the urges. They're still coming along, still getting waves of cravings coming in. Well, the next thing we can do is we can escape. Cravings and urges are almost always triggered by something. There'll, there'll be a trigger. A trigger can be absolutely anything. It can be a time of day. It can be a person. It can be a smell. It can be a room. It can be anything. Um, and if you're getting constant cravings and urges, there's a good chance there's a, probably a trigger around you somewhere. So we want to get away from that. We want to escape that. So basically... Escape means go somewhere else. Um, really doesn't matter where. If you're in the kitchen, go to the front room. Um, go for a walk. Go and see your mate. Just go somewhere else. Okay, so we've delayed. We've tried escaping. And we're still getting the cravings. Um, next, we've gone to A. It stands for accept and attack. First thing is to just accept that urges are part of recovery. Um, they're natural, they're part of being human. Um, if we make ourselves feel bad or feel bad because we're getting urges, that's just gonna increase our anxiety and the more our anxiety increases, the more likely that we're gonna go and want to use. So we try and just accept, okay, I've got an urge, that's, that's fine. But I don't have to take it lying down. There are things I can do. I can, I can attack this urge. Um, there's, there's quite a few of them, but a few are. We can surf the urge. We know that urges come in waves. So we turn it into a game. We pretend we're on a surfboard with a full Hawaiian shirt on, giving it a full Hawaii 5-0 and riding that wave out and seeing if we can do it. Um, sounds a bit mad, sounds a bit silly, but it can be really useful. Um, we can name and shame. We can imagine our urge to be a person or something that we really don't like. Um, you know, if you... You imagine your urge is some horrible, nasty little blokey who's coming along, and as you're walking along the high street, he's coming along and he's trying to put his hands in your pocket, going, go on, mate, give us 20 quid, let's have 20 quid, mate, let's have 20 quid. If that happened, you'd tell that bloke where to go, wouldn't you? Um, well, that's what we do. We tell our urge where to go. Um, possibly under our breath if we're on the bus or in Aldi's because we tend to get a bit funny about it. But otherwise, yeah, just tell your urge where to go. Imagine that urge to be someone you really don't like and tell it, tell it where to get off. Um, we could also do the shrug technique.
Research has shown that what makes us give in to an urge isn't the urge itself, it's when we start telling ourselves a story about either sometime in the past when we gave in to an urge, remembering that, or imagining what it would be like to give in to the urge in the future. Um, and it's that, that narrative, that story, that makes us give in to an urge. So if we can find a way of distracting ourselves and keeping ourselves in the present, we won't think about the past, we won't think about the future. And we can do that with the shrug technique. Shrug technique is really simple, works great for anxiety as well, and panic attacks, brilliant for that one. You sit and you shrug your shoulders. And what we're doing there is we're tricking our brain. Um, our brain knows that when we're relaxed, our shoulders go down, but it can't really tell the difference whether we've done it or it's done it itself. So we go, like that, and our brain goes, oh, hang on, I must be much more relaxed than I thought I was. Okay, then we take three deep breaths. Um, breathe in for three, hold for three, out for three. Do that three times. And again, what we're doing is we're tricking our brain, because our brain goes, hang on, when I'm relaxed, I breathe slowly and deeply. And I'm breathing slowly and deeply, therefore I must be more relaxed. Um, and then we name things in the room. Computer, um, weird mug, um, whiteboard with bad writing on it. And what we're doing by naming things and describing things in the room is it locks us into the present. And if we're locked in the present, we can't be thinking about the past when we gave into an urge or can't be thinking about the future when we might give into an urge. And so we're locked in the present and there's actually less chance that we will give into an urge. So we can attack using surf the urge, name and shame or shrug technique. Um, we can distract. Take our mind off it by doing something else. Does not matter what, do anything else. Um, wash the curtains, wash the dog. I haven't got a dog, buy a dog, wash that. Um, really doesn't matter. Um, we just need to do something else. Um, I've heard of people who've made job jars, little jar, and on it, lots of bits of paper with all those horrible, nasty little jobs that you need to do, mow the lawn, um, rolled up in the job jar. You get a craving, hand in the job jar, take it out, and the rule is, whatever it says, you got to go and do. Um, you could follow it up, you can have a fun jar, which is another jar with loads of treats on it, like um, watch your favourite episode of a box set, play on the Xbox, have a Mars bar. You roll those up, you do your job, you get a treat. Um, takes your mind off the urge. And the last one is substitute. I never smell, but probably close enough. Um, put something else in place of your substance. Um, so maybe if your substance is, if it's alcohol, then and you're used to sitting there at a certain time every day, with a glass in your hand. Well, buy yourself some really posh, organic mango and guava juice or something. Um, something that's that's only yours, it's really posh, it has value to you. And you have that instead of your substance. So your brain's thinking, well, hang on, I've still got me treat, I'm still doing the actions that I'm used to doing, but only you're doing it with something that isn't gonna harm you. You don't have to substitute even something that's similar. Um, I've known, speaking, spoken to people who, when they've had cravings um, for say cocaine, what they've done is they've got down and they've done 10 press ups. Sounds completely a mad thing to do, but you do 10 press ups, it gets your heart racing uh, and, and wakes you up a bit. Um, it's substituting something else. Um, um, so put something else, in place. And so this is the list of things we can do. We've got those cravings coming on. First of all, we can try and delay, put it off, see if we can get through the wave of that urge. Um, we can escape, go somewhere else, get away from those triggers. 
we can attack our urge, surf the urge, name and shame, the shrug technique. Um, we can distract ourselves by doing something else and we can put something else in place. Um, and the first let me try this, to be fair, probably won't work very well because we need to practice this. But if we practice this every time we've got an urge, every time we've got a craving, it gets easier and easier. Uh, and after a while, as soon as that urge starts coming on, our brains will instinctively go into doing this and hopefully we can defeat those urges. Um, I hope that was useful. Um, Ta-da.